good morning beautiful Sunday morning in Maine it's 73 degrees 830 in the morning this is just great but we're into uh, allergy season uh, there's pollen <laughs> and stuff flying everywhere <coughs> so as you can tell I might have a little cough but here we go today we are going to do an impeller, complete impeller housing, whole nine yards on a Yamaha 115. It's a 2011. Uh, don't know when the last time it was changed. So I talked the customer into doing it so that we do know when it was changed. But uh, yeah, fairly simple job. You got three bolts on this side, three bolts on the other side. You gotta take the trim tab off and there's another bolt under the little trim here. Uh, always unhook the Speedo and I put it in forward gear. Now, technically you don't have to do this, but the reason why I put it in forward gear or you can do reverse is when I'm sliding the gear case back on, I can just grab the prop and spin it to get the splines of the drive shaft to lock into the crank of the engine. So let's go ahead and get this off and we'll change the impeller. I got a 14 millimeter gear wrench, take these three bolts off on this side, same with the other side. I've already broke them free to make sure they were gonna come. Uh, this is a freshwater engine, so it should come apart pretty easy, but if you have ones that are coming apart dry, corroded and stuff, you can heat up this area with a burn dramatic torch or something. Don't overheat it because you will melt the aluminum. I know because I've done it. Gear wrenches or any ratcheting wrench is a lifesaver. Makes it a little faster, but you know how sometimes the heads are so friggin' big you can't even get them in there. So I'm gonna leave the one bolt in just in case it, you know, when I release this, it slides down and it doesn't like fall in my lap. Flathead screwdriver just to pop that rubber cap off. I can't quite remember what size. What size uh, that was. God, I was thinking in my head it was a 12 millimeter, but what do we got here? We got a 12 right here. An extension, probably a little aggressive. Yep, 12 millimeter it is. This also helps prevent on the torque steer. So I didn't do it, but there's marks here that you should either mark with a magic marker because the torque of the engine could make the boat, if you let go of the wheel, go to the right. And if your boat's going to the right, you turn that tab to the right to get it to straighten out when you let go of the wheel. All right, we got one there. It looks like a 14 millimeter. And this extension's probably a little aggressive. I might have to go get something else. That's not gonna work. It's a little long of extension, but let's see here. Uh, she come free, but I'm gonna make sure I bring a 3 8 with me because I want it tight. You always you can already see it separating, so that's a good sign that it's not stuck on there. I forget the manufacturer probably recommends every two years. Um, somebody that uses their boat a lot I'd tell them to put one in every year depend you know I don't care about hours and stuff like that my thing is uh, breakdowns you don't want your boat friggin broke down you don't want a customer's boat broke down so depending on how much they use the boat the, I got sailboat customers I change their impeller every year just like that so We'll take this up to the shop and we'll change out the impeller. And while we're doing it, we will check on the dogs. Be right back with you. Hey, what are you doing? 
being good where's the other one all right so i'm setting up to do this impeller this is the impeller housing four bolts right there gotta be removed might be a good idea just to hit this with a little sandpaper so everything slides off smoothly and let me get you set up so you can see what i'm doing get you in here a little closer All right, so I'm going to remove those four bolts. Uh, if I remember correctly, the 12s uh, socket. Whip those off like that. The kit may come with new bolts, but just make sure you keep track of everything you take apart. So, and we'll lift this up. See how it's got the uh, metal housing there. The impeller is under that. Sometimes that comes off with the plastic housing. Oh yeah, this one's got the little locking tab. Might need a hammer. There's a little locking tab that locks everything down. I forget about these. That's an O-ring. It goes between the housing and the... But you just keep working this and it should pop free. Might have to hit it with a hammer. There we go. It's just a uh, locking tab. And this plastic tab remember just remember how all this comes apart always save your old parts too for a little while just in case for some reason the kit doesn't come with anything and there's your impeller and we'll put a new one in it probably comes with a new plate oh it's got the key right here in the keyway you're gonna want to get that out of there so you can get that plate off little side cutters Pops it right out. Make sure you save that just in case, right? Then pop your plate and gasket. Dry as a bone. There's no sealing on it at all. So what I'm going to do is just put a little grease. That'll just help it seal. Just a little. Don't. You don't want to gob it on there. If you have to, you can sand that up if your housing's real corroded. So you put your new gasket on. new plate on there's a little tab there that wants to go down I don't know if you can see that but if it was up the impeller would catch it so you want to make sure that's down make sure all your bolt holes line up see I got the gasket on now so my bolt holes don't line up Let's flip that over I don't know if it matters but the lettering is up again put this one on the right way like that and then you got your housing housing so you got a little groove in here for the o-ring I put the o-ring in there but I put a little grease on it to help hold that o-ring in in place just like that. And then you've got a sealing O-ring right here. What I'm gonna do though first is put your cup in. And there's a, two little tabs. And there's two little tabs in there. There's really only one way it goes in. You wanna make sure it's flush, it's not sticking up. And then you got a, your O-ring goes on here. Again, you put a little grease on that O-ring help hold it in place <clears throat> so 
put her in there, smear her around. I really like the gaskets and not the O-rings. The O-rings tend to catch on the impeller when you're putting them in and rip them out, but we'll see if we can do it. Some people will put uh, like a gasket sealer, even the bellows adhesive or something like that, or product they call Indian head, just to hold it on there. Okay, let's see. Came with a new keyway. <coughs> Sorry, key, not a keyway. The key goes in the keyway. You might need a little persuasion with a hammer to get that set. Like that. I also put a little grease inside the cup in here where the impeller runs. Helps with dry start. Not a lot. Again, this is just very thin layers. Very thin. Put your impeller on. It only goes one way because the key way doesn't go all the way through. Just like that. A little grease doesn't hurt. This is where sometimes the impeller catches the O-ring. So, let's see if I can just like that turn it so it pops on. See that, how it pops off? And you're on, just like that. New bolts with grease. Oops, I forgot something, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot something. So pop this back off. I didn't even start those and they, they wanted to bolt right in. Remember the keeper on the top? <laughs> You got your washer, washer, and then your plastic ring. And then your little keeper. You take your little screwdriver and it pops right on there. Just like that. Good thing I looked down and saw that. I think it's just a Yamaha thing, honestly. All right, so we'll go back to this. Now we'll put it on. This is where the O-ring doesn't set right where you want it to because it's getting caught on the cup. That's why I like to put the cup in first. It's almost there. Just a little, little dealings. There we go. Make sure it's all in there. Just like that. Make sure your O-ring's in there and not messed up. Looks good. Like that. Now we can put the bolts back in. I wouldn't call myself a professional, but I've been doing this long enough. But, you know, even I forget to put stuff apart if, together. There's always something. So we'll just tighten these up. Look, the new bolts are a different size. Yeah, 
You don't want to over tighten these. You just tighten them off. And then we'll get the torque specs. We'll get the torque specs and we'll torque them down. All right, so you also have a gasket up here that the water tube goes into that you gotta pull out of the old housing don't ask me why it doesn't come with the new housing for the money you pay. So you just got pushing in these tabs and kind of up, see how it's popping out. Do it on both sides. Whoa. There's the new one. Just goes in the opposite direction, locks into those. I like to put a little grease on it. Gives it something to slip the tube to slide into. A little grease on the slide of the splines. Don't put grease on the top. If anything, if you do, just make sure it's a very, very thin layer. Because you get buildup of grease there. There's probably a good gap. But the reason why I was told that is because it could put pressure. When you bolt this up, it could put pressure against the crank. All right, I'm sure you guys want to know about this, but this is my stern drive installation jack. It's a big red. I got it from a Northern Tool. Took forever to get. Um, it was totally wicked. I use it all the time. Saves on my back. But if you watch my Baja video, you'll see that I installed it by hand <laughs> only because it was just in an awkward position all right i'm going to carry this drive down we'll get set back up and we'll put it back in all right we're going to throw this back on and you can see the water tube right here this is what the water goes up into the engine from here that's what you want to make sure it lines up now this one's actually not going to be issue because it's uh, stationary. Some of your other boats, like I did a Mercury a couple days ago, that water tube moved around. So I got the drive all the way up and I looked in there with a flashlight and that tube was not in the water pump. Happens more often than you know. You might have to get in there with a little screwdriver and line it up and then push it all the way in. Uh, make sure we get our Speedo tube up through this hole. This is your shift. We're already in forward gear. Um, so we'll put you right here so you can see. So there's a hole for the drive shaft to go in. You gotta get that up in there like that. Kind of grab. This is right where you have to do the speedo tube at the same time. I can see that the water pump's going in, and then this is where you spin it. can't see with my sunglasses on. Right. There we go. Oh, see, my shifter move missed. Try again. Right there's lined up. I'm going to spin the prop. There we go. Water tubes in, shifters in, speedos in. And just like that. Probably should have a bolt ready too. So put a bolt in, just so it doesn't fall out on you. Takes a second just to get everything lined up. There, now it's not gonna fall out. Luna. We'll put all the bolts in. Make sure you put all the bolts in before you tighten any up.
tighten this right up like that and put the plug in and then hook up your speedo tube if not you'll get a phone call my speedometer doesn't work just like that <laughs> I'm gonna hook up the muffs. Make sure she pumps water. Uh, if this was closer to the shop, I'd probably put it in a bucket because with the garden hose, you're actually pushing water through. So sometimes it can give you a, a false reading, but I'm confident this is gonna pump water. So I'm gonna go get the garden hose. All right, so I got my muffs. I'm gonna put those on. I got the quick disconnect on the side there. Do, do, do. Love those. I'm gonna put it on the drive. Make sure they're on there tight and it's covering that whole seal. The other thing is, is make sure you got water. You got no kinks or anything like that. We've got good water flowing. Stick it on there. Just like that, lock her on. Like that. Of course, we gotta take her out of neutral. Shift's good. Find the key. Fire up. it in gear just to make sure it shifts oh yeah I heard her shift Shifting good. you don't want to rev it up too high because you really don't want that gear case uh, like free spooling go back to neutral neutral's good we'll shift her in reverse nice and smooth nothing to it pumping good water this boat will be launched tomorrow morning and uh, they'll have a summer of fun. Put the trailer things down, put the ladder up. Truck will be here tomorrow to pick this up. Just like that. That's a water pump install on a 2011, 2012, 115 Yamaha. They're all pretty much similar with little quirks here and there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like and subscribe button several times, please. Like smash it and uh, have a good day.